Merry Christmas as well. So um, again, Merry Christmas Eve, everybody. We've been talking about the four gifts that everyone needs for Christmas. And those four gifts are very, very important, I believe, to each and every person. Uh, week one, we looked at the, the gift of encouragement, that everybody needs to be encouraged at one point or another in their life. I don't care who you are, it's always great to be encouraged. The second week, we talked about forgiveness. And let me tell you something, if there's one thing that each and every one of us need to practice regular, it's asking for forgiveness and granting forgiveness to those who ask for it. Um, this is such a critical part of us being able to enjoy life. And then also the third week we talked about hope, or last week we talked about hope. So what a, a, um, a cool thing that we can look at in this holiday season, because let me tell you something, if hope is set aside, it makes your heart grow weary. But when it comes, it makes life like flowing out of you. And so hope is so critical to us making it through any given day. So, all right, well, um, today we're going to talk about the fourth gift. And without this gift, I got to tell you, a child will never thrive. Families will fall apart. Companies will never make the, uh, the grade, no matter how much talent that they have. Churches will lose because of a lack of this gift. And most certainly, there is no Christmas without this gift. It is the driving force of all mankind. So what is this gift? It's love. This gift is so important that Jesus called it the glue that holds together all moral choices. Jesus said that when we do this, people would know that we're following him. As a matter of fact, he said, by this, all men will know you're my disciples if you have love one for another. And John, who was probably the closest friend to Jesus while he was here on earth, penned these words in 1 John, and it's this, God is love. God, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, is love. Not he loves, though he does. Not he is in love, although I believe he is. Not that he feels like loving or that he feels love, although I'm sure he feels something in affection because we are made in his image and have emotions. But his very nature is because God is love. And next to the cross, the manger is a signpost that declares to you and I that God loves you. C.S. Lewis wrote these words. I want you to listen to them. I think they're very critical for you and I because sometimes we think of love as something besides the act of love or the verb of love as the DC talk used to sing about. So listen to these words from C.S. Lewis. Love is not affectionate feeling, but it is a steady wish for the loved person's ultimate good as far as it can be obtained. God's love, looking out for our best interest. Uh, Paul wrote, while we were yet sinners, Christ died, or Christ loved us enough to die for us. Listen, it doesn't take rocket science to figure this truth out. As a matter of fact, we live in a broken world full of selfishness, and when someone shows love, it is so refreshing and so unusual that we just have a, we just normally just kind of perk up and pay attention. Um, you and I are not in a world looking out for the ultimate good of the people around us. We're normally looking out for number one. But love doesn't look out for only number one. It actually looks out for the better of others. As C.S. Lewis said, it's a steady wish for the loved person's ultimate good as far as it can be obtained. A husband who tries to coerce his wife is not loving. A wife who withholds affection is not loving. A co-worker who's trying to get ahead at the, at the risk and the, the peril of others is not loving. When you promote you, you're not being loving. When you're a public servant and you're helping get what you want instead of those that you serve, and it's not that we have no needs or shouldn't get anything out of our efforts, but let me tell you something. When you put your needs above others, it is not loving. So what is missing there? It's that steady wish for the loved person's ultimate good as far as it can be obtained. The steady wish. So how about this? Okay, listen, Paul says, faith, hope, and love, these three remain. But you know the next phrase, right? But the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. So how about this? Today is Christmas Eve. 
So let's just have a little challenge. Maybe you can't do this, and I understand if you can, but most of us can. I want you to go this morning and you get ready to leave for work when you get ready to go about your day, maybe go shopping. I want you to go someplace. I want you to buy a $10 gift card from a local establishment in your area. And when you go about either shopping or working or getting your lunch today and you see someone who is giving their best effort when they're actually giving what you would consider to be the best service or they're giving the best they can, that's love when you give the best you can to others. And I want you to give them that $10 gift card and tell them Merry Christmas. And tell them for and thank them for what they're doing. Maybe it's going to be an officer that you see out taking care of something. Maybe it's going to be someone ringing bells. And instead of just giving a gift in the bucket, you hand the $10 gift card to the person ringing the bucket. And you say, thank you for celebrating Christmas and for helping others. Today, go buy a $10 gift card and give it to someone who is showing you what you want or you love and others love. So do that, okay? Hang on one second. My battery is going low and I need to plug in. So keep on smiling. There we go. Nothing like live video, is there? <laughs> so do that $10 gift card thing, all right? Make sure that you give it to somebody who's really giving to others. Now, you all know this last phrase I'm getting ready to use. As a matter of fact, you probably have it memorized. So if you do, I just want you to follow along with me this morning. For God so loved the world, that's you and I, that he gave his only son, that's Jesus, the babe in a manger, so that those who are willing to believe that he was the son of God, that he died for their sins and rose from the grave, and they're willing to trust him with that sin in their life, with the lack of being perfect, with the I can't live up to the best that God wants, giving him that and saying, I believe you'll forgive me that you died for my sins. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever will do that, it says that we will have eternal life and that we will not perish being apart from God. And so this morning, the biggest problem you need to face is not the issues around you, although that's difficult. The biggest difficulty you've got to face is this. How loving are you and are you willing to be loving and be loved? You see, you and I have to choose. That's what's so hard. We have to choose to love. It is our choice to love. It is not something that always comes easy, but we have to choose. Listen to these words from Max Lucado. We are free to either love God or not. He invites us to love him. He urges us to love him. He came that we might love him, but in the end, the choice is yours and mine. To take that choice from each of us, for him to force us to love him would be less than love. God doesn't want your Christmas gift to be a forced Christmas gift. He wants to give you the gift of eternal life, the gift of absolutely amazing things in this life and the next life after. He wants to give you hope and joy, but he also wants you to choose it, and he doesn't want to force you to do it. But after all, isn't Christmas about just accepting gifts? And so this day, the fourth gift, the greatest gift that you could accept would be the love that Christ has shown to you as a babe in a manger, as a man on a cross, as the man who walked out and sat behind him an empty grave, who is now in heaven waiting for you and I to join him. And would you place your faith in him? And if you have placed your faith in him, would you find this season just a step above the norm that the world wants and understand that the love that's in you is to be loved towards others as well. I'm doing my best to choose love. I hope you are. I don't always get it right. Occasionally, I really blow it. But I'd rather be occasionally wrong and be loving than I would to be unloving and to occasionally have love for someone else. So how about you? Hey, Merry Christmas, everybody. May the gift that you get in your heart, that love, may it be the gift you can give away, and may you do both. Get and give love. So it's your choice. Will you give it? Will you get it? All right, everybody. Thank you so much. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Thanks for joining us in the next four weeks as we talk about the four gifts that everyone needs for Christmas. And hey, listen.